Hi. How you doing? Um, so I'm just setting a couple of things up here. Make sure it's all clear for you. How is everyone doing? All right. How many have we got in it? Can't see. Hello Mexico. Hello America. Hello everyone. Oh, I've had so much coffee. I'm fully, fully jacked up on caffeine. I'm absolutely buzzing off my tits. <laughs> um, so yeah, a few. Uh... Hello the UK, my people. So yeah. Um... I made I Remember. I released it. It's out now. And um, yeah, people seem to like it. So um, I figured I would show you how it's made. Just two seconds. I just need to just sort one thing. Okay, so I Remember. Um, here is the story about um, here's the story about this track I went over to um, I went back home to Scotland uh, to go see my parents they live up there and um, I was hanging out with my mum in the living room and we were just having a um, I don't know we were, talk we were talking about I hadn't seen her for a little while and we were talking about um, gigs and you know what what touring was like, how it had changed over the over the past few years for me, and um, and then uh, she asked me to show her some videos of me performing. So I showed her one of the videos from um, from Coachella at the Yuma Tent, and I can't remember exactly what video it was, but she and I'm probably going to butcher this story, but she basically when I showed her the video, she said that. Um, she said that oh, I don't know his face now, um, she said that it reminded her of embers so that was the word she said it's like embers this is like the this is what I see this is what I picture this is what I envision when I watch this video and she's like you, sh you should make a track with the inspiration um, of the word embers so I was like all right I'll do it now grab the laptop started making a beat and um, and it was this one. It was I remember. So I um, made the track, um, did it in I don't know a few hours. Um, it was like it just came together really, really, really quick. Just used the um, the laptop speakers on the um, on the MacBook Pro, and um, I properly fluked the mix down on this. So I think that. I need to triple check, but I'm pretty much this version that I'm going to play. Um, this version of the project, uh, the project was the one that I think I made it on the Wednesday, and then I flew to Moscow in Russia on um, like the Friday, the Friday or the Saturday. Oh no, no, that's right. I went to ADE on the Thursday, did a gig there, and didn't test the track, and then I went to Moscow the next day, and it was Moscow where I decided to drop the, the track to this point I'd still not listened to the track on any other sound system other than the um, the laptop speakers uh, I hadn't even listened to it on headphones but I was just like you know I'm pretty confident this is gonna sound good um, so I played it in Moscow and it turned out to be one of the best one of the best sound and mix downs that I'd done so um, I only made some little changes I only made some little changes to the um, to the mix after this I'll, I'll explain what I did. But overall, this is a really, really, really simple track. 
Um, obviously, um, I haven't mentioned anything about the vocal. The vocal is quite a an important integral part to this track. The The vocal was not written by me. The vocal is sampled from an old track that was called, um, it was by Ralphie Rosario, uh, who's a Chicago artist. And uh, I think the track was called You, you Used To Hold Me. Um, it's just like, a, it's a classic house vocal, really great vocal. Um, and yeah, I um, I sampled that. I had the I don't know why I had it, but I had the a cappella on the um, on the computer, and that's what I cut up to um, to build. I remember. Um, so re essentially, I just made it. The, the The approach that I took to the track was to make something to play that would be fun, and um, and then once I played it, I was like, oh shit! I think I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to release this. This is this is. Um, you know this just works so um, it's not the fanciest song in the world it's really really simple it's actually kind of um, the only the only thing that was making me hesitate about releasing this song was how underwhelmingly simple it was there was just so few elements I was like this I just no one's gonna take this seriously because of how simple it was um, and then the other thing that I was going to say was it's easy for me to say that it took a couple of hours to produce this but there was an element to this afterwards that took quite a long time and that was um, that vocal that I sampled the Ralphie Rosario used to hold me I couldn't use the original recording of that vocal so it took quite a while to um, get that vocal re-recorded and the reason you get that re-recorded is, is um, normally the actual recording of a vocal has um, rights issues. That is signed, uh, the, the, the recording is signed to a record label. And normally clearing the rights to the recording can be really, really difficult. If you get the, vo if you get the vocal re-recorded, you, um, you avoid issues with um, getting that recording cleared but then you are, then you have the issue of clearing the publishing and that's what we that's what we did luckily um, I was in contact with Ralphie Rosario and the and his co um, writers on the song and they cleared the vocal so I got it re-recorded they approved that version and this is the track that I released called I remember so there we go yeah so that basically the melody and the um, uh, the melody and the lyrics they are um, it's a published work. It's it's so there is there are rights assigned to the creation of that um, the creation of that vocal. I don't own that. So because I never wrote it, it was written in what, 1989, I think, or something like that. Um, so I have to get that cleared. So this is the problem with sampling, which is like the uh, um, it's like one of the it's one of the building blocks of dance music. Sampling is one of the building blocks of dance music, but it's also one of the most complicated minefields when it comes to rights and clearance. If you want to, if you actually want to legitimately put things out on platforms like Spotify, um, Apple Music, you, you need to do things properly. You can't just go and take, so a producer can't go and just sample me, sample part of my track, and then um, go stick it up online without getting permission to do so and getting permission to do so is, can be a bit a bit of a pain in the ass to be honest with you it takes a it takes a bit of um a bit of work a bit of experience a bit of um negotiation a bit of uh ego massaging all of this stuff it, it, it's, it's a comp it's, it's complicated so um if you can if you can pull it off you get great vocals like um like this Ralphie Rosario used to hold me on on your track, so that's how it came about. So, um, and someone asked, was this a problem with How's Your Evening so far? Yes. Two seconds. Yeah. Yeah, it's complicated. It's, it's just not like it's fine having a it's fine having a track that um, that works and people want, but um, at the end of the day. You need to be able to 
um, fully have the have the rights to do what you want to do with the track and um, that was up for interpretation that's why the track's not out just yet so I'm streaming get out hang on come in <laughs> she's like no 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 Mrs. Lake all right should we dive in so I'm going to show you um, you have to bear with me I'm going to show you two I'm going to go back to the original project um, before I started flattening things Someone's saying Walker and Roy's controller are in the same boat right now. Yeah, it's just like, you know, at the end of the day, you can't have you can't have high expectations about um, releasing tracks that, that are not fully in your control. If you sample someone, if you remix someone, you are remixing someone else's work. It's like I'm trying I'm trying to think of a, a more simple a simple way of um, you know using it I don't know it's like when you're borrowing someone's car just because you're driving it you know because you borrowed your mate's car to drive from LA down to San Diego doesn't mean that you can make all decisions related to that car you don't own it so I don't even know if that was a good analogy but you understand you just can't it, it, it's just the, it's just the way things work so it's like taking someone's picture um, you know using someone's picture or image you know stealing someone's image from from another Instagram account and not crediting them, you know. Um, okay, let's have a look. Is this all loaded? Let's try this. Um, do we see this? Let me know if this is working. All right, here we go. Yeah, so this is a pretty unbelievably simple track. Um, ignore this. I don't know why. I, th I think um, you see how it's saying Mariah Carey, always be my baby. I think what happened was I must have, when I was working on the track, I must have dragged in a Mariah Carey a cappella. And then, let me show you. If I do, if I take. Let me add a let me add a track. Just help you understand why that's coming up. If I go a cappella, if I put here we go. I've got an Axwell and Grosso um, a cappella here. If I double click here and then I replace, if I drag another a cappella, if I drag another a cappella into here, it'll change the file but it won't change the file name. So I think that's what happened here. I must have, I must have replaced the file when I was looking through for acapellas to drop into the track. So um, this is the track. It is sick and it is super, 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 super basic. What the fuck was that? Yeah. Um, so let's have a look. Let me show you. So these are the drums. They are really, really, really basic. Really basic. Um, you just have a, a kick with that kick tweak plugin that I love. Uh, by Singo Makers. Um, just, well, this is the kick before. And then, oh. And then with the plugin. It just beefs it up a little bit. Um, I think I have, what do I have here? A little kit, um, just with some. What have I got playing here? Um, and then 
this. See, nothing revolutionary. Um, I've got a little drum loop here. What's this doing? So yeah, put them all together. That's the backbone of the, the whole rhythm. I mean, I think I, I think I have in this section, when, when, the, when the beat's properly rolling, I might have a couple more elements. So, yeah. So I must have added um, like a little loop here. Yeah, so. Yeah, this is probably a little bit, this is maybe a little bit gutting, but I mean, this is it's super, super simple. Um, this is the bass line. Um, it's just a. Uh, actually, I think it's one of the main. Pre I think it's built off one of the main presets in um, in Ableton uh, in um, Silent, Silent, whatever. Um, just this. I'll play that with um with the kickstart off. Honestly, the way that that kick and that bass works together, do you really need much more than that? It's like um, I remember there was there was something that there was something that Steve Angelo said years and years and years ago, and it always stuck with me. He said that like if you if you can literally get that kick and that bass working, like you've got ninety percent of the track done, um, because that's what that's what moves you on the on the dance floor. You know, um, that's what gets you going. So. I completely agree. I've, I've, I've um, you know, if you can get that relationship between the kick and the bass rocking, you're just laughing. So um, that's the bass. Then uh, what else have we got? I'll show you what I did on the original a cappella. This this was the original a cappella. I remember when you would say. That you love me in every way I remember when you would say that So I didn't use that in the end. Obviously I had to get that recut. Um, but this is, you know, this is how I built it. These were the chops that were originally in it. I remember when you I remember when you I remember when you I remember when you Bang. Um, okay, what else? The synth hits. These are the synth hits. So these are the only thing that I ended up mixing a little bit different on the track. Um, after I played it in the club, they sounded a little bit dull. So I, I think on this version, they might be a little bit more dull than what I had before. But this is the, this is what they sound like. They're really simple. Again, I think they were just. What was this? Um, so, this first one. Honestly, I think it was just a preset in um, preset found in in, um, in silent silent. So.
really really simple um, I just think I took uh, I took the low end out to make room for the the baseline you know you've got to you can't have that baseline and the synth cra uh, clashing um, and then what else did I do fuck all uh, this synth here so I like the character on that one but I think then I added this in to give it a bit more depth so once you merge them subtle but it sounds big in the track Um, this is not a black book plugin. No, this is um, a plugin alliance black box. It's like a it's just a saturation kind of distortion um, thing. I don't know. I just I just stick it on and like. Oh, I wish I was more technical, but I, I like I'm not. I, I just put it on, and if it's if it sounds good. I kind of run with it. So, um, someone was asking about kickstart settings. The, the opening settings. That's it. That's, that's, that's all I've got on there. Um, what else? What else? There was this vocal hit. This was this was it made ages ago. So I, I I can't really show exactly what's going on here. But this is a pretty key sound. Um, I have. Um, it's just like an old acapella of Gita's, but it's just I just dis distortion reverb, uh, the side chain, a uh, bit of EQ, and um, this I, I don't know why I started messing around with this old plugin that I used to use probably 15 years ago, the B the BBE Sonic Maximizer, but it's just like you know. Um, and then the rest is just effects. That like the, the you know the effects are just simple. Come on, Chris. Know, um, just another, just a riser here. What's this one? What's, what have I got going on here? Sorry, I had the mic turned off. Um, what do you mean you can't see the plug-in windows? You can hear me now, right? So, yeah, um, I'm trying to think what else I can really kind of like dive into on this. this is, it is simple. The, the main thing that I wanted to show was um, the the re-record of the vocal. So, how did I mix it? Um, well, I just kind of like mixed this one as I went along. Um, it, it just, I mean, you could see how simple it was. It was just, it was just I don't know, it's just kind of like, came together really quickly. It, it was sounding like that really 
really quickly. Um, I, I, it's almost like I didn't even mix this one down. I just threw sounds in and it just kind of worked and I left it. Um, you know, this like, I think that's, that's kind of key. You need to be able to, um, you need to be able to recognize um, if that's working or not, you know, because sometimes, uh, you know, so, well, most times record uh, tracks are just not simple. You, you have to work really, 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 really hard to try and get it to sound good. This is one of those examples where I didn't, it wasn't hard. Um, it just came, it just came together. And, um, you know, so I think that was just, just down to um, sound choice in particular, you know, one of the, one of the, for me, one of the hardest, one of the hardest sounds to get right um, in a track is well, it's the relationship between a kick and a bass. And that was like, that was one of the most immediate, um, that was one of the most immediate things that came together, that kick and that bass. So, I think that's why, you know, when you have a, when you have an idea that you really have belief and confidence in, that it just, just works, it makes the music making so much easier. Just all the all the decisions that come off the back of it so much easier. Because if you if you press play and just immediately it's like yeah, this has me rocking. You know, it just it just gives you confidence to to do things that like I mean, in particular in dance music. But as soon as you snap back to that kick and bass, it's like yeah, this is working. Um, it just I don't know. It just gave just gives you confidence to just kind of like crank through the track and I think that's why this came together so quickly. So anyway, um I do, 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 what did I do? Um This is the vocal. This is the vocal recap. So let me see if I can drag in the the previous acapella so that I can compare it to something. A summary. Oh, there we go. If your kick doesn't what was, it, what was someone just say? If your kick doesn't work, if a kick doesn't work, you can put makeup on it, but it's still going to suck. Pretty much, yeah. So okay. So just to reiterate, this was the original acapella. Okay, so um, we got this recut by, um, I, th well, I guess that's the name of the singer. Um, actually, I, I do need to give a shout out. Um, I did a, I didn't even, re I didn't even record um, the remake of this vocal. Um, Matt Handles from um, Yolanda Be Cool, um, the guys that made um, Don't is it Don't Don't Speak Americano. Um, they they were in town and they they needed um, um, studio time, and I had my studio free. And I said uh, they they actually wanted to work with this singer, and um, I heard the voice and I was like, well, I'll give you the studio, use it as much as you want, if you cut this vocal for me. So. Um, we did a swap. They cut the vocal for me, and I um, and uh, I did this. I, I just you know I mixed it and everything. So teamwork. Um, this is the this is the recut vocal. I remember when you would say that you love me in every way. I'm oh, sorry, I had the mic on. Two seconds. I remember when you. Um, so I have a BB Sonic Maximizer. I probably, I had a limiter on the track until um, 
just for testing until I got it mastered. And then, um, yeah. And then I got it mastered um, in London and uh, at Wired Masters. Um, so they're the shit. Shout out to Wired Masters. Um, so, yeah. Really, 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 really simple. Yeah, um, as for the left window, I'm not showing it because I don't want you to see my files, so fuck off. I can show you some things, but I'm not showing you everything. I'm not showing you my wardrobe. Um, anyway, I'm going to read your questions because I, um, I didn't have I didn't have all the chat set up. I couldn't really see what you were saying. Um, sales music. I like this question. So, you've been producing recently, and your bass and sub sound really good on um, on your studio monitors. And then when you play it from your phone, it sounds awful. Well, you know, the, the, you've got to find a balance in your monitoring situations. That's why the, there's a reason why um, there is a set of monitors um, that are called the Yamaha NS10s. They're, they're a very old um, monitor that they were actually original when they were originally made they were originally made as hi-fi speakers and I guess someone I don't know who it was someone identified them as being really really good at giving um, uh, giving a sound and response that when you like if you mix the track on NS10s the the saying in the music industry was that if you can get it right on NS10s it's going to sound good on any set of speakers that's why if you look at all these really expensive music studios you will see NS10 speakers in nearly all of them and the top the top mixing engineers use these NS10s now you don't have to use those anymore it's not like that you know um, if you've got the money you've got the finance if you can be asked to service the things um, and run an amp and all this yeah they're a great option but like even the like finding the cones the replacement cones for these um speakers is really difficult now they're, they're, they're really hard to find um but the whole thing is the whole point that i'm getting to is is that it's um it's important to understand when you're mixing how a sound will translate onto other sound systems so for me one of the most important things, obviously, there's if you're going to listen to something on good speakers, the extreme low end, like everything below 100 hertz, it's really important. That relationship and in, in how all the sounds are working in that frequency range, like from literally 20 hertz up to um, up to 100, it's really, really important. That's the stuff that you're going to feel in the club. That's the stuff that when you walk in um, and you listen on that, really, really powerful expensive um sound system that's the that's the bit that's really going to make you feel the bass um but for most listeners for what for most people that are listening on um on laptop speakers on your, phone, on your phone speaker and all of this that's that's a different frequency range and for me the sweet spot the sweet spot for having like giving the impression of um of a bassy record on shit speakers without it being bassy is that f I mean, uh, maybe like from 100 hertz up to 250 that range is neglected by so many people in um, in dance music but that's the range that translates when you're listening to um, when you're listening to a track on shit speakers that's where you hear the bass. So when you when you switch between your really nice monitors, where you know you get your bass line, you're kicking your bass line. It sounds really nice and really subby on um, on your expensive bassy speakers, and then you switch to your laptop speakers or the or, or your phone, you can't hear anything. It's because you've neglected to try and make the mix work in that 100 to 250 hertz range. I might, I might be a bit inaccurate about the, the frequency, but like that's the sweet spot. And that's where like harmonics come in um, on, um, on your bass line and, um, and your kick. And you wanna get, you wanna work on getting 
the frequencies in that range to be able to be heard whilst not being too overbearing and making the track sound shit. So I do spend quite a lot of time trying to get a mixture between having a really nice low end bass and then having this sort of tone and um, kind of signature, something that makes you feel like you're hearing lots of sub bass coming from that 100 to 250 hertz range. Um, if you can get that balance right, um, track starts sounding really, really good. So if you go and listen to, like, I'd say a good example um, from me of that would be Deceiver. If you listen to Deceiver with Green Velvet, I spent fucking ages trying to get the mix down and the relationship between the really, really low end frequencies and then that tonal part of the bass line to get the blend between that heard. Um, actually, let me, change, let me change the camera. Um, yeah, to try and, to try and get that um, heard. So, sometimes it takes time, sometimes it just clicks, um, but you, um, you really need to get that, that blend right. And so, going back to um, the original question, you need to, shift your focus from that extreme low end you need to get you need to you need to uh, work on the bigger picture of the song or like work on uh, understanding all the different um all the different places this music can be heard on understand that there are a lot of people that are not just listening to this on a really expensive system it's going to get listened to on the shittest of speakers you want to make a track that's going to sound good on that um Right, what else? What's your biggest advice on evolving an idea to a full song? Um, be quick. Um, yeah, be quick. Just try and evolve that idea as quickly as possible. Get it down. Just try and... You know the... the it's, it's weird how, you know, these modern... These modern um, sequences give us so many options, so many, uh, so many choices, so many, uh, so many ways to make music. But at the end of the day, like we, um, I still think about live music. I still think about how artists perform things. How, like I, I've now, I, I now try to use Ableton. It's just it's just like a language, but I I, I try not to like fuck. I, I feel like I'm making an absolute hash of explaining this. You want to just try and feel your way through a song. So I like if I I'll, I'll hit play. I'm, I'll probably start building a track with like an eight bar loop, but then I will try set things up in a way so that I can manipulate that eight bar loop on the fly. So I'll drop, drop sounds in, drop sounds out. I will drop the bass on this, drop the bass on that, or you know, drop the low end on something, and, and try and flow through the track. And I'll, I'll play it, and I'll try and do things live, so that, you know, um, try to react to the song in a way that feels right to me at the time, and then listen back to it and go, mm, yeah, that that feels good. Okay, I'll move on. Um, so yeah, you just, you, you, you want to use. Um, you know, these sequences need to be used in a way that like helps you get to that end goal faster. Not just like just trying to use every single tool that's you, at your disposal. This stuff, there's so much choice now. There's so much. Um, there's so many different ways of making amazing things, amazing sounds. Um, there's so many amazing possibilities. But it's just like going into a restaurant, and um, you know, you go into a restaurant with 200 choices on the menu. If you sit there and you read all of those 200 choices, you'd be like, fuck, I want everything. But at the end of the day, you can only eat one meal. So, um, you know, sometimes you just have to make it, you just have to make a choice and run with it. So, um, yeah, fucking just get moving, just get making music. Move forward. Um, I did show the baseline synth. It was Sillinth. You snooze, you lose, mate. You snooze, you lose. Um, what else? Anti Ups album sneak peek. Fuck off, mate. No chance. <laughs> uh, I can tell you this much. It's got kick drums in it. Um.
I did open Silent Window. I'm positive. Two seconds. Hang on. Best advice to find your own sound. Don't listen to everyone else. Just make your own shit and try and figure out what is exciting about what you do instinctively. Um, must, you know, of course, it's kind of like, it's kind of difficult and impossible to listen to other people's stuff. But you know, I've got I've gone through periods in my career, and I'm now looking back, this is this is my experience that I can pass on to you guys. Okay, when I first started making music, I was pig-headed and I wanted to do everything my own way, and I'm thankful that I did that because it gave me the opportunity to develop my own sound. When I look back at the worst parts of my career, um, was when I started comparing my music to other people's and started listening to other people's and trying to get my music sounding closer to theirs. And it was a fucking disaster looking back on it. Absolute disaster, you know? Um, I, think it's, uh, I think it's important to really focus on you, you know, on your own. Oh, hello, Waxy. Um, it's just important to focus on you. At the end of the day, it's like that. There's there's decisions that go on in your own mind. That you need to obey. They that is your unique selling point up here. Those decisions that you make. You know, there's like um, everyone. Everyone in production, in in music making, it's just it's just a series of choices, and you you, you end up you end up in a you end up in a in a hallway with a series of doors, and you have you have a choice of which door to go through. You go through one door, and then you're on to a next hallway with a series of other doors. And every single person will choose a different series of doors. And um, you know that is what will give you your unique sound. You just need to make your own choices rather than be listening to one of my songs and trying to make another version of one of my songs or making another version of one of Wax Motif's songs, you know? That'll, that's, um, that's a great way to not get noticed, you know? I, 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 I will read through more of these comments, but I'll say one more thing, okay? I can see some people talking about, um, talking about sending demos in, how to get, like, how to get noticed, how to, um, you know, what's Black, what's Black Book looking for? Um, and you know what stands out a country mile when you're listening through to um, when you're listening to demos you can hear trends you can hear what's influencing sound um, and for me personally something that's really off-putting is when you can drastically drastically hear the um, the influence of a song, um, you know, the, the song like the the latest song of a moment that just that you can hear it in the in the demo that's being sent. It's it, it just doesn't feel like it's got its own its own voice, its own kind of like sound. Um, I, I I do I find it really off putting. Um, if I you know because I, I think I, I also get said to me as well that like you know producers even some producers that are pretty well known say I'm trying to write something specifically for Black Book. And like, so often it's really, really off-putting because it's like, just write a really good song for you and then we'll discuss if it's right for Black Book. Not try to write it right for Black Book. Make it right for you, you know? Make it so that you feel it, as in you the artist. Um, so that's what I'm looking for. I'm just looking for something that just feels like it's um, it, it's connected. It's it, it, it's authentic. It's like fucking epic. That's what I'm looking for. You know, that's the stuff. That's the stuff that makes me excited. So I, I you know, I work with. I have I have my own team. I have um, so uh, I have a full time A and R now at Black Book. Ian. Um, uh, Ian Mazeth and this, this is what happens okay we get sent demos and we'll, we'll share things it's things that kind of like catch our ear we'll just like bounce bounce ideas off each other and I'll send I'll send send tracks over and be like what do you think to this and 
Like the reaction between us is um, is very telltale, and we'll just be, we'll be very honest. What's the first? We'll, like, we'll, we'll be honest with each other. What's the first thing that jumps out about the track? It sounds like this. It sounds like this track. It sounds like that track. It sounds whatever. Um, and that's off. That's often very like that's like a, a very dismissing kind of like um, quality to a track. If, if if immediately we're just like listening to it, it's like oh, it just really feels like it's overly influenced by something. But but then you, I think the thing that the thing that gets really exciting is when a track sent over and we're like, oh, do you hear this? That's sick. You know, just like when just like what it's like when you're with your friends. You know, when you call up your mate and you're like, hey, you heard this one? This is ridiculous. Get on it. That's what we're looking for. That's that's what I'm looking for. I just want, I want to be excited by this stuff. I just want to be, um, you know, I just want to be, I just, just want to be excited. I, I, I'm, I'm a fan of dance music at the end of the day. I'm a fan and um, I just want to, fucking enjoy the music that I'm listening to so yeah what else by the way yesterday um, for anyone that's just joined the chat I, I, um, yesterday was Cheyenne's birthday uh, he is my digital guru he is my wizard happy birthday he just turned 75 uh, he's looking good for 75 seriously um, happy birthday mate happy birthday yeah so Groove pool, yeah. Sorry, I, I saw someone asking about that. Yeah, I do use the groove pool. It's, it's epic. Um, yeah, the groove the groove pool's amazing. You just you just have to use it in the right way. I mean, at the end of the day, it's like um, the more that I've, the more that I've been using it, the um, the groove pool the groove pool can be really really good it's just it just all depends how much you use it depending on what track you what track you're uh, you know you're working on what the, what the groove of the song requires um i've been doing more and more just like recording things in live um and then just if it sounds good if the take sounds good just leaving it that's it so you know um chris serum or silent who gives a fuck they both sound great um, yeah, you, there's a send demos via the um, uh, the link on the website. I don't know why that thing's fucking vegan. Um, how did I improve from zero to now? Practice. Um, I don't really use that many tutorials. I used to read Future Music religiously, but I haven't read that for about ten years. Um, the magazine. Am I planning any collabs? Yeah. Uh, mostly right now. I mean, the the only collab that I'm really, you know, doing is uh, Anti Up. We're working on an album and we've got loads of stuff going on. What's the best way to improve? Just keep working. Just keep working. It's like practice. Just, to, you know, um, not even just practice. Just be, you know, just experiment. It's, uh, um yeah it's just the same as anything anything literally anything you know how good was your first time having sex fucking useless i bet you i don't even need to continue um <laughs> if you're a new tech house artist coming into the game what would you make your name I'll tell you this much it wouldn't be Chris Lake what a fucking shit name but it's my name so um, I was too young and stupid to even think about anything anything decent when I was young um, well actually we're getting on Warzone right after this fuck yeah um
the Red Bull Remix Lab song, Scrap. I mean, I, I, I made that track the day before um, I went into that that lab thing. I mean, it was just, I was just messing around. It was just like a, that track was, the, 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 you were talking about the 400 track. That that was, it was just me messing around. I, I don't even know if it's like, um, if I was to release that, I'd actually like to go in on, I'd like to go in on it and make it a little, a little bit, um, uh, a little bit more noodly. It's so on the nose. It's so like, just, I don't know. It's just a little bit too on the nose. Um, but just, just a little bit too sad. I love playing it. Yeah, this follower's chime is doing my fucking head in. I'm going to mute it. Go quieter. There we go. Bang. Um, and, uh, what was I talking about? I can't fucking remember. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, the, uh, the 400 track. Um, it's just a bit too... It's just a bit too on the nose for me. I, I need to go, I need to go in on it. It's great to play out. I think if if uh, people were to um, sit and like, if I was to release it online for people to really get into, I don't know. I'd like to just go. I'd like to go into it a little bit more, make some of the details a bit more um, cool. I just haven't had the um, um, I haven't had the energy to dive into it. Have I talked to fish all the time? Yeah. Um, how often do I go through the black with demos? Honestly, every couple of weeks. Um, so it's not immediate. How special was it making Stay With Me? Um, it was special. It just, uh, it was, it was odd though, because I was pretty stressed about the shows. So, um, I just kind of like rattled through it. Um, just kind of like a bit of an instinctual, um, production method um, I was really trying to get something done quite quickly um, so it actually was pretty stressful I'm proud of it though I would have mixed it different actually that's one of the only tracks that's one of the only tracks in the last few years that I um, I wish I'd have mixed down different I might even change the mix down I might just re-upload it when's the next release um, I think probably July just wrapping it up now so um yeah. So yeah. Anyway, I think I'm just a way to hit an hour, and um, that was fun. Oh yeah, hang on. You wanted me to show you the the synth. Let me just show you the synth for the bass. All right. Okay, so I'm going to open up the uh, synth and show you um, what it looks like. Okay, I see what you mean now. You guys are saying that the, that the I didn't realize the plugins are not coming up on the window. I'm sorry. I get it now. I get what you're saying. Two seconds. Let me fix it. Two seconds. Sorry. Let me just set it up. How the fuck am I going to do that? I'm only just. I'm only really just getting into um, streaming, so. Uh, let me do add source. Oh, hang on. Maybe I can do it here. Does this work now?
fuck, what a pain in the ass this is. Display capture. Bang. No, I got it. Because I'm getting notifications coming up that will. Um, I don't want you guys to see. It's all my nudes that Cheyenne sends me. <laughs> I'll figure that out. I'll have to figure that all out. But um, yeah, basically, um, I can explain to you if you have Silent, it's literally just the preset 90 the BS Moog base that's it pretty much that I just adjusted it a bit so so yeah anyway um, I'll wrap up the stream by saying that um, yeah one happy birthday Cheyenne happy 80th um, two stop sending me nudes um yeah three i'm sorry it's taken so long for me to get into um streaming i have been uh, i've had life shit to get on with there's been uh there's been lots going on i hope you guys understand that is why i have not been um rushing into um rushing into coming on camera and uh showing you guys things like this so i am uh yeah, sorry for life shit. And, um, but yeah, it's fun. Um, when I first started, did I get any rejections? Loads. Loads. Crashing any more Zooms? Probably. Um, yeah. But anyway, I'm, I, I'm enjoying this Twitch stuff. I think it's really, really cool. I, I wasn't that familiar with it but i've been spending a bit of time on it i love it i feel like this feels really natural i really like showing you guys this i feel comfortable with it um but here's an explanation of what else is going on we have other artists on the label i want to get them involved in the stream um i want to find um ways that whatever you know whatever ways those artists feel comfortable i'd like to get them involved I like to show you guys um, more about these artists as well. We've got some great artists being signed to the label. Um, you know, a lot of these artists are um, European based as well. You might not even know that much about them, even if they're American, even if they're North American based. You might not know loads about them. I'd love to show you a little bit more about their personality, who they are, um, and uh, you know, use the stream that way. But also. I'm a wannabe Formula One driver. There's my racing rig. I'm gonna be streaming lots of me trying to get around a track in a half quick time. So um, I'll be doing some of that. And then Call of Duty, I'm probably the worst player that has ever played it, um, ever in the existence of mankind. I have two left hands. Um, I have the, um, I have terrible hand-eye coordination and um, yeah. That's me. So anyway, that's what I'm, that's what I'm doing. Um, I'm here. So subscribe. I think we're gonna have a. Um, I think we're, we're gonna upgrade this shit soon. I've literally only just started using it, so um, there should be more options. What is it? Um, what do you become? Partner? Is that it? Partner? I'll be a partner, mate. Twitch partner. So, um, yeah, the DJ stuff, I mean, I'll figure that out. It's not my, um, there's loads of other people that are doing really cool um, streams right now. I might jump on, we'll see. So, um, I need to go get some water. I'm going to come back in like, I'm going to come back in maybe half an hour. And I'm going to fuck around on some games, alright? So... Alright. See you in a bit. <laughs>